Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Cobra. Welcome to the series where I teach you how to code in Python. Do not click on this video just because it is an introduction as I'm going to have some very important information about what the series is going to entail and also some very important information for people that are new to programming as a whole. The first thing I want to mention is the Python version. I'm going to be using the latest stable version at time of recording, which is 3.9.0. When you're watching this, there will be newer versions out most likely, so 3.9.1, maybe 3.10, something like that. However, the series will still be able to cater to those as there won't be enormous changes in the front end that will affect any of the base syntax or anything like that. And also when new Python versions come out, I'm going to be doing videos talking about their updates. And if necessary, I will actually append videos to this series with those updates. So for example, if 3.10 includes a new operator or something like that, then I will cover it in this series. So with that little bit out of the way, I'm going to show you how to actually download and install Python onto your computer. So you come to your web browser as you would expect, go to https colon slash slash python dot org dot org, not dot org. Well done me. <laughs> and you go to the download section. Now you can click this uh, button here to get the latest 64-bit version of, of Python, or you can go here and, and see some other versions, including some other uh, pre-releases and stuff. However, we're not gonna bother with that. We're just gonna hit this button here. As you can see, Python 3.0.0 AMD 64. So this installs the 64-bit version of Python. If you need the 32-bit version, you go into that menu and find it there. You just click save. I'm going to save it on my D drive in my downloads. And then once it's installed, I or once it's downloaded, sorry, I'm going to load it. And we are actually going to go through the installation process together. So I'm going to hit uh, add Python 3.9 to path. I'm going to hit customize installation. And we want all that, so we're going to hit next. And then I'm actually going to click install for all users because I just prefer it being in this directory. If you are on a computer with multiple users, then I would recommend installing it just for yourself. However, uh, if you're the only person using the computer, I would actually recommend doing this. Uh, you don't necessarily need to download the debugging symbols. I'm gonna do it anyway, because I think that's somewhat useful. I actually don't remember, but what the hell ever. So then you come up with this admin screen that you can't see, and then we come here and it's it's now installing. While it is installing, I'm going to talk about some extra things. So if you're new to programming, then the term IDE probably isn't familiar to you. So it is an integrated development environment, and it's basically where you code. It is the thing that you code in. So you might use Notepad to take down notes. You would use an IDE, or even a text editor, to... Um, to actually write programs. You don't necessarily need to use it, so you can literally use Notepad if you want to, but I would highly not recommend that. We're probably gonna be looking at a few IDEs, so in this video I will show you the basics of Idle, because although Idle isn't the best IDE in the world, it's okay for absolute beginners. It does have some uh, some qualities about it. Have a f uh, For the first few episodes of the series, I'm actually gonna be using the interactive mode, which I'm also gonna be talking about in this video. And after that, I'll probably be using an ID called Sublime, which is just a lightweight uh, text editor, really. But you can use whatever ID you want. If you're not new to programming and you have a favorite ID, then feel free to use that. The one thing I would say is if you're new to Python, I would recommend not using PyCharm because I cannot tell you how many problems it has caused in the support server by people using PyCharm and not knowing how to use it. So if you do know how to use it, then feel free. Otherwise, don't. Uh, as you can see, the setup was successful. That actually took a lot less time than I was expecting. <laughs> I was expecting it to, to take a little longer than that, but never mind. So we can close out this now. And we can launch we can launch uh, the terminal or a Windows CMD or something like that. And we can type in pi, and it should say Python 3.9.0. Um, and you can do you can do all sorts of stuff here. We're not going to be using the interactive mode in this video, however, we are uh, we are going to be using it in, in some future videos because there's no point in actually doing proper scripts. But for the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how to use idle and also talk a little bit about pep8. So to, to open idle, you just do a window search and you search for idle. I have two versions of Python, so you specifically want idle 3.964 bit. You launch that and bam, uh, it probably won't look exactly like this. Um, Apparently 3.9.0 preserved my settings, who knew? But this is the quote-unquote dark mode. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I generally don't recommend using this, but it will probably appear in curry and you and in white. It works the same, it just looks different most likely. 
So in here you also have your interactive mode. So you can do say three plus three and it'll come out as six or 45 times 23 and it'll come out as 135. Or you can even just do hi and it will say hi back to you. To create a new file, you hit control N and you get this little file here. So in here we can do our first program, which has to be Hello World. You're, this is a fun fact actually, you're not allowed to make your first program anything other than printing Hello World to the terminal. That is that is a true story. Uh, <laughs> but to save it, you hit Control S, you just go down here. I'm just going to save it to a D drive because I'm lazy. And we're going to save it as my first program. Um, or you can save it as like Hello, actually we'll save it as Hello World. That makes it easier. And you save it as a .py file because it is a Python file. You can save it as a .pyw. The differences don't matter, well actually they do matter at this stage, so don't save it as a PYW. Um, I might explain PYWs later in the series, but for now just save it as a .py. Hit that, and then to actually run it we can hit F5, and it'll run in this, in our shell here, and it'll say hello world here. How about it? If you want to run it in CMD, you can. You just open the terminal. Uh, we're already in the directory where the program is, but you would uh, cd into your directory, whatever it is, and you would do python hello world.py, and bam, it prints it in the terminal. Look at that. And um, like that, you've written your first program. So that covers pretty much everything I was going to say in the introduction, apart from the pep8, which I just remembered I need to do. I'm going to briefly mention what it is. Um, you don't need to know it in and out to be able to use Python. However, this is more a standards thing. Pepe is the style guide that Python uses. I am going to be following Pepe while I do this, mainly because I feel as though it's, it's best to know good standards off the bat when you're doing this. It might add extra complexity, but genuinely I really do think it's better to know these off the bat so you, you don't get into bad habits because it's it's a lot easier to get straight into good habits than to break out of bad habits. So the general consensus is that variable names and function names are all lowercase with underscores. Uh, constants are all uppercase. And although there isn't really much else outside of object-oriented programming, but constructors and stuff, you have the first letter as a capital and the rest not. And then I think there are some other things as well, like private variables and stuff like that but it's not it's not super important but I'm going to be following the spacing requirements and all that stuff in PEP8. I'm not really going to be mentioning it but I did want to let you know that this series is going to be employing it so if, if anything looks weird it's probably PEP8. It could be a typo there will be uh, times where I accidentally forget or do a typo or something but I just wanted to let you know that but if, if that confused you then don't worry about it. You, you won't need to worry about it too much. But yeah, that is now everything I wanted to talk to you about in the video. I'm surprised we actually got it under 10 minutes. How about it? If you do have any questions about the installation process or idle or what is on the screen right now, then feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I or someone else will get back to you. Or you can join the Discord support server using the link in the description below. While you're down there, I'd recommend you check out all my socials. So I have my Twitter, my Facebook, my library. I also have a brand new Twitch account. Uh, that you can find a link to down there where I'll do streams and stuff. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, while you're down there, I'd, I'd recommend you check out those. But with that, we're going to end the video here. If you liked it, then say hello below. If you really liked it, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. And if you really, really liked it, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Of course, you don't have to, but really cool thing for you to do. I'd just like to thank all my patrons that are currently supporting me. And I will see you in the next video where we talk about data types, so we actually get into the nitty gritty of Python for the first time. So I'll see you for that.